Famous as one of the most successful and enduring faces of the NBC family, Matt Lauer's seemingly perfect life turned upside down overnight, making it extremely complicated. Accusations about his intimate behavior constantly surfaced, making fans realize that Matt Lauer is living a complicated double life. Furthermore, people also discovered creepy details surrounding his work and married life. Take a deep breath and prepare to enter into shocking discoveries about the life of Matt Lauer. Let's start the story of Matt Lauer's double life with a shocking incident in 2017. The shocking revelation of his termination sent shockwaves through both the media industry and the millions of viewers who had welcomed him into their homes each morning. The bombshell dropped on November 29th, just ahead of the morning broadcast. NBC News chairman Andrew Lack's memo landed like a thunderclap, detailing the abrupt end to Lauer's tenure. The language was stark, describing a detailed complaint from a colleague about inappropriate intimate behavior in the workplace by Matt Lauer. For a man who had been a fixture of morning television for two decades, the fall from grace was sudden and severe. Savannah Guthrie, Lauer's co-anchor, faced the unenviable task of delivering the news to viewers. Her voice trembled with a mix of shock and sorrow as she broke the news at the top of the broadcast. Guthrie's revelation that the entire team had only just learned of Lauer's termination, moments before going on air, underscored the gravity of the situation. She spoke of heartbreak, not just for the institution of NBC, but for the brave colleague who had come forward to share her story. The public was left with more questions than answers in the immediate aftermath. The memo hinted at a pattern of behavior, suggesting that Lauer's transgressions might not have been isolated. However, it wasn't until nearly two years later that the full extent of the initial accusation came to light. In an excerpt from Ronan Farrow's explosive book Catch and Kill, Brooke Nevels stepped forward with a harrowing account of her encounter with Lauer. She described her life as being derailed by the emotional and physical trauma she suffered during an intimate encounter in Sochi, Russia, back in 2014. Neville's courage in sharing her story shed new light on the allegations against Lauer and sparked a broader conversation about power dynamics in the workplace. The fallout from Lauer's termination reverberated far beyond the confines of NBC. Additional allegations of intimate misconduct surfaced from multiple women, as reported by both Variety and The New York Times. The once revered anchor was now the subject of scrutiny and condemnation, his legacy tarnished by a trail of broken trust and shattered careers. Two years after being thrust into the spotlight of Farkabert Me Too, Lauer broke his silence in a lengthy statement to Variety vehemently denying all claims of inappropriate intimate behavior and offering his side of the story with pointed precision. In his statement, Lauer addressed the most damning accusations head-on, notably debunking the rumors surrounding the infamous lock button in his office. He painted a starkly different picture of his encounter with Brooke Nevels, framing it as a consensual extramarital affair that soured over time. Contrary to Neville's depiction of a traumatic assault in Sochi, Lauer portrayed their relationship as a continuation of a mutual attraction that blossomed on that fateful night in Russia. According to Lauer, the affair persisted upon their return to New York, with both parties willingly engaging in further encounters. However, he acknowledged ending the relationship abruptly and poorly, ceasing all communication without explanation. Lauer's admission of his own shortcomings in handling the situation added a layer of complexity to his narrative, humanizing him in the eyes of some and casting doubt on Neville's version of events. The former NBC anchor didn't mince words when accusing Neville's of fabricating her allegations to further her own agenda. He portrayed her as a scorned lover seeking revenge, alleging that she attempted to reignite their romance even after their relationship had ended. Lauer's assertion that Neville's motivations were rooted in financial gain, particularly through the sale of a book, aimed to undermine her credibility and cast doubt on her integrity. But perhaps the most striking aspect of Lauer's statement 
was its tone of defiance and resentment. He lamented the damage wrought by the allegations, not just to his own life and career, but to the women with whom he had extramarital relationships. Lauer condemned their actions as a betrayal of shared responsibility, accusing them of evading accountability by resorting to false accusations. In a parting shot, Lauer declared his refusal to remain silent any longer, vowing to no longer provide shelter to those he believed had wronged him. His words carried a sense of righteous indignation, a man pushed to the brink by what he perceived as a gross injustice. Yet, lurking beneath the surface was a palpable sense of defiance, a warning to those who dared to challenge his version of events. Many people are scared about the mysteries surrounding Matt Lauer's life, especially the creepy details about his office. The portrayal of Matt Lauer's office at 30 Rockefeller Plaza, known colloquially as 30 Rock, became a focal point in the narrative surrounding the allegations against him. In the wake of the bombshell expose by Variety, which detailed not only the alleged intimate harassment but also the eerie existence of a button purportedly used to secure his privacy, public scrutiny intensified. The description of Lauer's office painted a chilling picture, a secluded sanctuary where he wielded power and influence, shielded from prying eyes by a mechanism designed to afford him privacy at the push of a button. According to Variety's expose, this button was allegedly used to lock the door from the inside without the need to physically rise from his desk. For Lauer's accusers, it represented a sinister tool that facilitated inappropriate conduct behind closed doors, with no chance of interruption. The revelation of the button sent shockwaves through both the media industry and the public consciousness prompting outrage and disbelief at the notion of such a clandestine feature in a workplace setting. It raised disturbing questions about the extent of Lauer's control and manipulation, fueling speculation about the scope of his alleged misconduct. However, amidst the uproar, conflicting accounts emerged regarding the existence of the button. Sources cited by People magazine attempted to downplay its significance, describing it as an idiosyncratic thing that was commonplace in executive offices throughout 30 Rock. According to these sources, the button was not a nefarious instrument of coercion, but rather a mundane fixture of office architecture. In response to the allegations, Lauer himself vehemently denied the existence of the button in a detailed statement to Variety. He refuted the claims as erroneous reports and insisted that no such locking mechanism ever existed in his office. Lauer went further, asserting that NBC had publicly confirmed the absence of the button following his termination, effectively debunking what he deemed to be baseless accusations. Additionally, it's true that Matt Lauer's relationships aren't always healthy. The revelations about Matt Lauer's behavior behind the scenes at the Today Show shed new light on his interactions with former co-anchors Katie Couric and Meredith Vieira. While Lauer had long been lauded for his on-screen charisma and professionalism, reports surfaced of unsettling incidents that hinted at a darker side to his demeanor. One particularly disturbing episode came to light through a video uncovered by TMZ, capturing a moment during a commercial break on the set of Today in 2006. In the footage, Lauer can be heard making lewd comments to Meredith Vieira, his then co-anchor, as she adjusts her sweater. Pretty sweater. Keep bending over like that. It's a nice view, Lauer remarked, his words tinged with an uncomfortable mixture of familiarity and objectification. The resurfacing of this video added fuel to the fire of allegations against Lauer providing a glimpse into a pattern of behavior that extended beyond isolated incidents. It painted a picture of a workplace environment where inappropriate comments and gestures were not only tolerated but seemingly normalized. In addition to the unsettling video, reports emerged of Katie Couric's candid admission during a 2012 interview on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen. Couric revealed that Lauer had a habit of pinching her behind on the set of Today, a revelation that was met with nervous laughter and apparent dismissal. However, in the context of the broader allegations against Lauer, 
Couric's remark took on a new significance, hinting at a culture of harassment that permeated the studio. Despite Couric's seemingly lighthearted response, the impact of Lauer's behavior on his colleagues was far-reaching. According to Ronan Farrow's book Catch and Kill, Meredith Vieira played a pivotal role in encouraging Brooke Nevels to come forward with her allegations against Lauer. Vieira herself, a respected journalist and former co-host of Today, recognized the gravity of the situation and urged Nevels to take action. In a subsequent appearance on Andy Cohen's serious XM show Radio Andy, Vieira expressed her shock and dismay at the allegations against Lauer, echoing the sentiments of many who had once regarded him with admiration and respect. Her candid admission underscored the profound sense of betrayal felt by those who had worked closely with Lauer, highlighting the devastating impact of his actions on both a personal and professional level. The saga of Matt Lauer's tumultuous tenure at NBC took yet another twist with revelations about his role in Ann Curry's messy exit from the Today Show in 2012. As detailed in New York Magazine's in-depth feature, speculation swirled about Lauer's attitude towards Curry and its potential impact on her uncomfortable departure from the morning program. Author Joe Hagan delved into the dynamics between Lauer and Curry suggesting that their lack of on-air chemistry may have played a significant role in her downfall. Hagen's portrayal painted a picture of discord behind the scenes, with Lauer reportedly expressing dissatisfaction with Curry to NBC staffers and executive producer Jim Bell. The discomfort was palpable, with Lauer himself acknowledging the awkwardness of their on-air dynamic. As tensions escalated, reports emerged of Lauer's growing frustration, manifesting in clashes with producers and disruptive behavior during early morning hours. Hagen's account painted a picture of a man grappling with personal dissatisfaction and professional discontent, openly contemplating a shift towards a simpler, less demanding lifestyle. For Curry, the experience was vastly different, marked by what she described as a climate of verbal harassment at NBC. In a candid interview with CBS This Morning in 2018, Curry spoke out about the pervasive nature of verbal intimate harassment within the network, shedding light on the toxic environment that she endured during her time at Today. While Curry stopped short of directly implicating Lauer in her departure, her comments hinted at a broader culture of mistreatment and misconduct within NBC. The question of whether Lauer played a role in Curry's ousting remained shrouded in ambiguity, with Curry herself acknowledging that she was not privy to the inner workings of the decision-making process. Yet the pain of her abrupt exit lingered, leaving a lasting impact on both her career and her psyche. The revelation of Matt Lauer's alleged double life within a double life added a new layer of intrigue to the already complex narrative surrounding his tenure at NBC and the Today Show. As detailed in Joe Hagan's expose in New York Magazine, Lauer's involvement in the morning news program coincided with a period of uncertainty and speculation about his future with the network. Reports emerged of Lauer flirting with the idea of departing NBC and Today altogether, spurred in part by rumors that American Idol host Ryan Seacrest was eyeing his coveted position. The specter of competition loomed large, prompting Lauer to explore alternative opportunities outside of the network. One such opportunity took shape in the form of a potential collaboration with ABC on a daytime talk show featuring Lauer and his former co-anchor, Katie Couric. Hagen's account painted a picture of behind-the-scenes maneuvering, with Lauer working closely with then-NBC Universal CEO Jeff Zucker to develop the concept for the ABC program. The stakes were high, with implications that extended far beyond Lauer's individual career trajectory. The proposed deal with ABC threatened to upend the delicate balance of power in the morning news landscape, with NBC's flagship program Today hanging in the balance. According to Hagen, the ABC deal represented more than just a career move for Lauer. It was a strategic gambit with far-reaching consequences for the entire NBC network. The prospect of losing Lauer to a rival network sent shockwaves through NBC, 
prompting fears of a seismic shift in the morning news hierarchy. In its final form, the ABC deal envisioned Lauer assuming a dual role as co-host of the daytime talk show, alongside Couric, and as an ABC News personality. The potential synergy between Lauer and Couric, both beloved figures in the world of television journalism, added an extra layer of intrigue to the unfolding drama. The parallels to a plotline from a political thriller like House of Cards were impossible to ignore. The behind-the-scenes machinations, corporate power struggles, and high-stakes negotiations read like the script of a gripping drama, underscoring the cutthroat nature of the media industry. Matt Lauer's decision to remain with NBC after flirting with the prospect of a move to ABC marked a pivotal moment in the network's history, with far-reaching implications for the future of the Today Show and the morning news landscape as a whole. As detailed in New York Magazine's in-depth expose, Lauer's retention by NBC came at a hefty price tag, with the veteran anchor securing a record-breaking two-year deal worth a staggering $25 million per year. The magnitude of the contract underscored Lauer's status as a linchpin of the network, with the Today Show poised to be rebuilt around him. The negotiations with ABC had served as a catalyst for Lauer's contract renewal, with the rival offer providing leverage for him to secure a lucrative deal with NBC. According to reports, Lauer strategically utilized ABC's interest as a negotiating tactic, ultimately opting to remain with his longtime home at NBC. The potential threat posed by Ryan Seacrest's arrival at NBC was deftly managed, with Seacrest joining today in a different capacity that did not directly challenge Lauer's position. Meanwhile, amidst the swirling speculation about Lauer's future, questions lingered about the fate of Ann Curry, whose uncomfortable exit from the Today Show in 2012 had been the subject of intense scrutiny. Contrary to popular belief, New York Magazine's investigation revealed that Lauer's contract renewal did not directly precipitate Curry's departure. Her name reportedly did not feature prominently in Lauer's negotiations, and NBC had allegedly made the decision to remove her from the show prior to Lauer's contract renewal, citing reasons that extended beyond their strained relationship, including a decline in morning ratings. However, the magazine's expose suggested that Lauer wielded considerable influence over Curry's fate, given his newfound power within the network. Despite his purported ability to intervene on her behalf, Lauer's decision to sign a new contract with NBC without insisting on Curry's retention tacitly endorsed the network's plan to remove her from the Today Show. While this may not have painted Lauer as a horrible person, it underscored his pragmatism and self-interest in navigating the complex politics of network television. Outside of work, Matt Lauer is also considered a terrible person in marriage. Despite projecting an image of familial bliss, cracks in their seemingly idyllic union began to surface in 2008, when Roque quietly filed for divorce. The news sent shockwaves through their circle shattering the facade of marital harmony that Lauer had meticulously cultivated. While the divorce filing was swiftly withdrawn just a month later, the details of the tumultuous period remained shrouded in secrecy until 2014, when Radar Online obtained Roque's divorce papers. The documents painted a damning portrait of Lauer, with Roque alleging a pattern of behavior that endangered her physical and mental well-being. She accused Lauer of prioritizing his personal interests over his family obligations, leaving her feeling abandoned and isolated in raising their children. Roque's allegations went further, claiming that Lauer exerted extreme control over every aspect of their lives, from finances to domestic decisions. According to her, she was unable to make even the smallest decisions without his approval, a dynamic that left her feeling powerless and marginalized within their marriage. The revelations about Lauer's troubled marriage cast a shadow over his carefully curated public image, raising questions about the authenticity of his persona as a devoted family man. Despite outward appearances, 
the cracks in their relationship hinted at deeper underlying issues that ultimately proved insurmountable. The strain on their marriage reached a breaking point following Lauer's termination by NBC, with Lauer and Roque formally separating in the aftermath of the scandal. Their divorce, which was finalized in 2019, marked the end of a union that had weathered years of turmoil and upheaval. In a stunning admission, Lauer publicly acknowledged his extramarital affairs shortly after the divorce was finalized, offering a glimpse into the complexities of his personal life and the challenges he faced in reconciling his public persona with his private actions. The aftermath of Matt Lauer's intimate misconduct scandal unearthed a troubling aspect of his personal life that had long been rumored but never fully acknowledged. In the wake of the scandal, a report by People magazine shed light on Lauer's alleged infidelity, painting a picture of a man who routinely cheated on his wife with multiple women. According to sources cited in the report, Lauer's extramarital affairs were an open secret among those close to him, with his wife, Annette Roque, residing in the Hamptons while he maintained a separate residence in the city. The revelations sent shockwaves through Lauer's inner circle, with one source bluntly stating, everyone knew. Despite the widespread awareness of his indiscretions, there were no reports of Lauer making unwanted advances toward colleagues or subordinates. Another source corroborated the claims of Lauer's infidelity, noting that everyone on staff knew he cheated regularly on his wife. However, they emphasized that Lauer was not perceived as predatory or coercive in his behavior towards others. Further complicating the narrative was the assertion that Lauer's affairs were not limited to one-time flings, but rather ongoing relationships with women over whom he held significant seniority. This detail raised questions about the power dynamics at play in Lauer's personal life and the potential implications for those involved. However, amidst the speculation and allegations, one aspect of People's report proved to be accurate. In 2019, Lauer finally admitted to his infidelity as part of a lengthy statement to Variety, where he vehemently denied the allegations of intimate misconduct leveled against him. In a rare moment of candor, Lauer acknowledged the pain and embarrassment he had caused his family as a result of his actions. Because of my infidelity, I have brought more pain and embarrassment to my family than most people can ever begin to understand, he wrote. They've been through hell. Lauer's admission marked a significant departure from his previous denials, offering a glimpse into the complex interplay of personal and professional dynamics that had defined his life in the public eye. His acknowledgement of his wrongdoing and his plea for forgiveness underscored the profound impact of his actions on those closest to him, revealing a man grappling with the consequences of his choices. The scrutiny surrounding Matt Lauer's personal life intensified once again in 2016 when rumors surfaced alleging an affair between Lauer and his Today Show colleague, Natalie Morales. A source ignited the speculation, suggesting that Morales's departure from Today to join Access Hollywood was linked to the alleged affair. According to sources cited by that source, Lauer's purported discomfort with Morales and an underlying tension between them were cited as possible reasons for her career move. The rumors sent shockwaves through the media industry, prompting both Lauer and Morales to vehemently deny the allegations. Lauer, in particular, addressed the gossip head-on, emphasizing his commitment to protecting his family amidst the swirling speculation. Speaking on the Mike Lupica podcast, Lauer expressed his frustration at the intrusion into his personal life, stating, When you feel your family is being threatened and hurt, you speak up. Despite the denials, the rumors persisted, casting a shadow over Lauer's reputation and raising questions about the dynamics within the Today Show team. The alleged affair with Morales served as yet another chapter in the ongoing saga of Lauer's personal life, adding fuel to the tabloid frenzy surrounding his relationships and behavior off-camera. Interestingly, the allegations of infidelity weren't limited to Morales. 
A year prior, Lauer found himself at the center of speculation regarding an alleged affair with celebrity chef Giada de Laurentiis. Once again, Lauer unequivocally denied the rumors, dismissing them as baseless gossip. The constant barrage of rumors and speculation surrounding Lauer's personal life underscored the intense scrutiny he faced, both professionally and privately. Despite his efforts to maintain a semblance of privacy, Lauer found himself thrust into the spotlight, forced to defend himself against salacious allegations that threatened to tarnish his reputation and legacy. What do you think about Matt Lauer's complicated double life? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this, and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.